What's up, friends? This is Jazz bringing you another vlog of, you know, the Mystery Dungeon. Get, or the Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon vlog. Uh, actually, there's a lot of things I want to say otherwise, but I'm just going to stick to the topic of the vlog. We'll just say, I'm sorry there's not many other videos out, but I'm going to try to get right back into the schedule of things. I'm on and off with it, but anyway... I've beaten the main story of Mystery Dungeon, and, well, my moods are going back and forth from it. It is a challenging game. That is one thing the Mystery Dungeon series this time around had going for it. I, I guess since I've beaten the main game, I could give a good outlook of the whole game, but I never beat the post-game yet. I'm waiting. The one good thing that this game has for it now is that after main series game you don't have to go right through the the main, the main events you could take a lot of side challenges like like connection orb things on it won't start until you actually do that like until you actually head for the cave that you have to beat Satu on or whatever to save your partner. Again, spoilers, I know I apologize for saying that a little late. But yeah, spoilers. But anyway, you have to be Satu to find a way to save your partner to start with. That's like one dungeon. And for that dungeon you gotta be at least level forty, so you just a heads up, if you are not at least nearing level forty, like level thirty seven to 40 and if you have a fire type then it has to it should be at least level 45 so but if you're not a fire type and you have a good type advantage so level 37 through 40 is probably okay for that dungeon and I'm still level 27 going on 28 so that's not gonna be a while for me but I suggest taking a lot of side missions on first and even the connection orb quests can be really challenging and some of the frustration I'm having now if I have any with the game is my own fault I instantly thought oh I would solve everything I'll finish all the missions there was like five or six in that one dungeon I got knocked out I saved afterwards lost all my money all my items including the held one held items used to be safe now they're not even safe but that's my own fault, my own stupidity, obviously. But they give you a challenge. That is something to respect in a game. I may have felt like throwing things out the window before. Like, for example, I was battling, when I got to the point of battling Yveltal, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? Because his Oblivion Wing would knock out almost the whole team and, and if you didn't have enough reviver seeds if you struggled through the dungeon you were pretty much screwed right I finally watched plenty of walkthroughs learned how to beat them I saved up the reviver seeds I used the I finally learned to use the alliance attack properly to a point beat that one okay got to the dark matter much better, what I say. Yes, I lost, but at the second half, but it brought me right outside of the boss battle. I didn't have to go through that whole dungeon again, and I'm like, hallelujah. And not only that, I think it still let it save to the point where you lost, so he still had damage right done to him, so it made it easier. I was like, one of the easier ones. In fact, I was expecting a whole lot more of the boss battle. I beat the what the one time that I expected. Then I went into the second battle, and not long after, I got I got defeated maybe twice. I think maybe even only once. No, twice. And I went in. I was just continued the alliance attack with me and my partner at their first stage, at like at the, you know, the regular stages. Like, not the Scarf Evolved ones. What is it? Awakening or whatever. And it knocked it out. Then it went to a cutscene. I expected it to come back. And then it just it ended. 
And I'm like, wait, wait, what? I said, no, no, that is not it. It's going to jump at me, isn't it? It's going to be a big F you, right? Nope. It literally had the longest end credits. But anyway, I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, I actually beat the main series game. That battle was far easier than the one with Rio Valtor. It was a little annoying, but they gave us some room to breathe with letting us walk right back into it and not have to do everything else. But I mean, as I said, some, some frustrations at this point on is somewhat my fault, right, for not being more properly prepared. But the only... I'm trying to think. The only thing I can say about the Connection Orb that I really do not like is the fact that the Pokemon you recruit through it will take breaks, and often they're long ones. So let's just say you have a level 50, 60 or something Pokemon, right? Well, sure, you can go through a dungeon, even several missions if it's in that same dungeon with it. But the next day, more than likely, it will say closed or C, but it means closed, right? That means you cannot use it that time. While it, while it has that, you can't use that Pokemon. The only ta thing that doesn't apply to is you and your partner during the actual, during the game. And not, like, during the actual, not the main game, but I meant during the actual game. Not, like, the Pelipper's Island. During Pelipper's Island, you and your partner, or whoever, so on that team or whatever, cannot be used at Pelipper's Island. But in the main game, they are always compatible to use. They won't take breaks because it's obviously you and your partner or whatever. The only time you can't use your partner is obviously at this time where... Well, we'll just say again, spoiler, obviously. You know how all the Mystery Dungeon games end with you, your part being over, and say when the world, you float up in the air or whatever, and you're brought back, and then you're, well, you know what I mean. Well, guess what? Nintendo, or well, the game developers decide to switch that role around a little bit, and it's your partner who has to disappear. Yeah, that's what happened to your partner. Anyway, apparently your partner was a reincarnation of Mew, or Mew's soul. Reincarnated as. Okay, that yeah, was reincarnation. And, like, at all this time you're worried, before that, that you're going to disappear and have to leave your partner. But then... Apparently, your partner goes up to the special tree of yours and his, its, or whatever the gender is, and Yveltal, not Yveltal, Xerneas, taps him on the head, wakes him up, taps him on the head, and he remembers everything. Uh, both you and your partner's memories were lost. So, I guess, before, you and your partner battled the dark ma matter, and lost, like you defeated it, but it came back. Like you didn't defeat it properly, apparently. So you wanted its memory erased, right? And wanted to, for, he would do the same mistake again. Or whatever, right? So, they, the memories are erased, you defeat the dark matter, but not only, not really the fact that you defeat the dark matter, you do, but then your partner accepts the dark matter in their lo in your life. Like, they keep, like, the dark matter goes on. He said, that's okay. You're part of me. You're part of all of us. You can stay. And your partner's just pretty much letting his heart out to the dark matter. Right? Like, freeing. Like, kind of freeing it in a way. Because it's hate and whatever that causes it to be the way it is. And once the reincarnation of Mew let the dark matter into the lives of everyone, that he just gave up in a way. He was, it was free. And it, it's a strange concept. I mean, it's hard to even explain, but I guess after that, the purpose of Mew or the reincarnation of Mew was done. So I guess they made sure that you could stay like the human, right? And you would disappear of that. And it, you know what? All the endings of the mystery dungeon were kind of sad, right? Particularly, well, this one wasn't, it was sad and it wasn't. The only really sad thing about it, in my opinion, is the fact that during the end credits it just shows you laid down crying 
at the tree while your partner's gone. It's like, they literally put a still image in there. I'm thinking, what are you trying to do to press kids? I mean, it was, actually, I pretty much just blanked through it. Because I just wanted it to end, or the cutscene to end, pretty much. But, but when you think about it, if you're a young child, having a scene like that seems kind of chilling. What's it say? Hey, kids, it's okay. Like, is it, don't get too close to people, folks. They'll go away once their purpose in your life is done. Okay, I'm being a little cynical or dramatic or about it, right? But I mean, although I I kudos to the game developers to switching the roles of that around. It's different. I mean, obviously it's the same thing. What someone's disappearing after their purpose in this the world is done, but it isn't your character this time. Which really makes no sense, though. I mean, obviously, I do kudos them to sw that for switching things around a little bit, but it would make more sense if the human goes back to that world or whatever. Not the Pokemon. Oh, well. I mean, eventually you get your partner back at in through those series of events, but... Obviously, I have to be far, levels have to be far higher for me, because I'm going up there by myself in that mountain. <sighs> Ten floors. I mean, for God's sake, I barely hold my own in the ones I'm doing now. Although I do. Sometimes, like, sometimes even the high-level Pokemon that I have recruited aren't always up for the job in certain, like, dungeons. So sometimes I think, how the hell am I going through the other by myself? Level 40. Makes no sense to me. I mean, what's worse though is when you have missions with other Pokemon escorts. Especially weak ones like Skitty for God's sake. Poor Skitty kept getting knocked out and my Pokemon got knocked out. I ran out of Reviver Seeds. Probably should have saved some of them, because all I needed was one Pokemon. <sighs> oh well, I know, I keep ranting. It was a while since I actually did a vlog about this, so I thought I would just go on. Maybe I'll upload this tomorrow, till I get everything together with my Let's Plays and such. <sighs> yeah, I, I do like that game. Right, I've, I'm impressed by the challenges, the visuals are beautiful. They have a good concepts of ideas, right? How connecting to the whole world, like each continent you go on can represent one of the prior games. Like, I cannot remember which does, and I'm not going to get too far into that. But almost each of them represents one of, like, the... There's some that represent the red and blue rescue team. Some that represent the explorers, like, of Sky, Time, and Darkness series. Some that represent the gates to infinity and so forth, right? And it's a brilliant idea. You can recruit all the old ones. In fact, I recruited High Dragon, and I believe it's the same High Dragon. I think so. But that guy was, like, a hoot. Too, I think, I, although I do hate the fact, another thing I have a problem with is that you cannot nickname the other recruits. Just you and your partner. I mean, I understand they've already been established in a certain way, but come on. It makes it original, being able to nickname them and have an identity with them. Here, it's just, oh, we're friends, let's go on a mission. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to go do something else now. I mean, really? I mean, the nicknames give them the identity. I mean, they make you, them part of your team. It just feels like they're being borrowed. They're not being, well, I think that's probably the point. It's because really they take time off. For God's sake, in the other games they didn't get that option. They could just go whenever they feel like going in a dungeon. Oh, no, I don't feel like doing anything today. So I'll put this big cardboard thing in front of me. Closed. I mean, okay, I know it's saying they're not being able to be used at that time, and that's the purpose of it, but sometimes I wonder if Game Freak or Nintendo or whoever, okay, sometimes I'm confused who made those games because they're different than the other ones. They have another company doing it as well. 
forget which one it is, but I wonder if that's their idea of a joke. I mean, it's literally the, the, the closed sign. literally looks like a joke is being played on you. No, 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 not today. I just feel like being lazy today. <laughs> yeah, I know, now I'm just rambling on, but that's also a thing, too. I mean, they didn't have to make it look so comical. I mean, oh, uh, that'd be nice. I could just say I don't want to do anything or go to work or do anything today. <laughs> Yeah, although I don't think that would go as well for me, would it? <laughs> as it would for them. I probably would be dragged out of my room if I tried that. But anyway, that is pretty much most of my thoughts so far for it. The, as I said, the visuals are beautiful. The game is, it's difficult. And it's, that's good, too. A little too difficult, but for me... Anyway, at some point. I mean, I beat it. Woohoo. And it gives people a challenge. I will praise them all for that. They have beautiful story. Like always. Like the story in the Mystery Dungeon games were usually flawless. The story may not have been as good as some of the past Mystery Dungeon games, but it's decent enough for me. Right? Like the idea is the same, but they give characters. They have like Beautiful characters are developed really well. Most of them. Some you don't even barely see anymore. Like, for example, I think the only one you really overly see in the other one is Esper. And Okay, yeah, okay, I lied. I'm not done. Obviously, another plot twist. Like, always, like I knew. Nutsleaf was a bad guy. Ha! What? I would lie if I said I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I would lie. Because I was like, I was literally watching, like, even before watching anything, I was reading the walkthrough and all that stuff, and they didn't completely spoil it in the walkthrough, which is brilliant. But I would see the Yvelto, Bohemia, and Nuzli from the, like, what? Like, after seeing that, boss battle walk through I said Nuzleaf's Nuzleaf's a bad guy isn't he 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 was conning you wasn't he yep not surprised kind of went down almost exactly how I visualized it would come down oh yeah 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 you were there so I took you there for I hoping I would get you to release the water for I can use all the power for myself I had vicious intentions all along. Okay, I'm saying all this about Nuzleaf, and it is somewhat warranted, but I suppose I should be a little fair. He was being controlled, as were the Bohemian and Yveltal. Dark Matter is the real bad guy. None of those Pokemon on are, despite what it seems. And he was a little vicious. Like Nuzleaf, but his main problem was he, he was being controlled by the Dark Matter. And he ends up trying to save you guys in the end. So, it all ends well, so he's a little bit better than some of the other twist bad guys. Because, like, for example, Dust Noir always was evil. He wasn't really being controlled, I think, by Dialgla. Dialgla was being controlled by something or a matter, but... Dust Noir wasn't. He always had a cruel mind. He was always a cruel Pokemon. There was no good to him. Nuzleaf there was. And Gengar... Yeah! I definitely still like Gengar over Dust Noir. Like, better because... Gengar gets a heart in the end. And he was kind of misunderstood. He was just more... What is it? Well, I don't know how to explain it. And yes, I know I should be talking about the side bad guys of the Explorers of Sky Time Team Skull. Yeah. Zubat and Coffin were big chickens and... And Skuck Tank, he gets a heart in the end. He... somewhat... He... he was probably more nasty than Gengar was in some ways. But 
she had a small redeeming quality compared to Dust Noir, right? I mean, obviously, like, as I said, I'm getting to the point where Nuzleaf was a bad guy, but was more control a more controlled bad guy. Let me say, kind of like N in Pokemon Black, I feel. Okay, I'm being a little dramatic there, too. N was controlled by lies, where... You know what? I don't know what to say. I think Nuzleafs is more forgivable. Because technically, yes, N was, like, controlled, but he was controlled by lies, and he still had his mind, I think. Nuzleaf was literally, like, the Force was controlling him. The Force. Anyway, now I am going to end it before I go any further. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in my next video.